Okay guys, so I get asked a lot about distressing. How do you distress? What's your method for distressing, Joni? Or um, what's an easy way to get in distress? What tools do I need, etc. So I'm gonna show you guys how I distress. Um, it's super simple. Uh, it's actually like one of my go-to methods. I really don't use anything else unless I'm feeling fancy. <laughs> and I wanna use an extra tool or something. So anyways, okay, so this is what I'm using. These are Annie Sloan's, uh, jump backwards, Annie Sloan's uh, sanding pads. So I just cut this one, they're reusable. This is the medium grit. Um, they get finer as you use them. So they're reusable. I love that about them because as soon as they get really fine, like this one's pretty fine, um, I can use it on like, distressing um oh like pieces that maybe i want to have a dark underlay but i don't want like the wood but maybe it has a yellow wood and i'm wanting that dark contrast between the paint and that color to show through if that makes sense to you guys that's taco <laughs> so anyways so that's that's what i really love about these and these are annie's sanding pads so they're reusable they could, like a three pack um fine medium and real grit and like i said they go down uh they fine down and you can really keep using them time after time um so i cut these this one in half obviously they come about in this size um let's see size of my hand so yeah and the why i like these better than um like your sanding pads is because I can soak these in water, which I'm about to show you guys, and use them to wet distress. And that's how I distress my pieces is with water. Because Annie's chalk paint is um, water-based, I can use it to break down the paint and get a more natural effect. Rather than taking a sander or a real uh, heavier grit, even sandpaper, it seems like it will cut into your wood and make it raw so you don't have that dark contrast of wood. Um, so I like the wet distressing. It's, it's really um, more natural looking to me than sandpaper um, or a sander. Um, some people use scraping tools, razor blades. I've used those like for some more chippy effect. Um, you have to be careful with those because especially when you distress right after you paint and it dries, um, that paint still giving it you still got to give it time to cure so you can scrape up a lot more paint than what you're actually wanting to um, and I painted this it's a piano bench about um, I'll show you guys now and I'll squat down I'm in my barn y'all so um, so I painted this about oh two nights ago. So it's had time to really cure and cling to the wood. So if I had painted it like, oh, tonight and then let it dry and went right back over, I wouldn't have to wet it before. So I'm just gonna kind of like add some water. So I've got like a water bucket and I'm just gonna put that sanding pad in there and the paint is dry. And I'm gonna just do this with it. Can you guys see that? I'm adding water over the top. And all I'm doing is kind of like softening up that paint a little bit because it's had time to really cure and cling to um, the wood and I want to distress it. So it just kind of helps me a little bit. You can just go ahead and start sanding with water too. So um, you don't have to soak it before, but I kind of do. And you don't like dump water on it. You just kind of lay it over and uh, kind of let it just sit for a little bit. Like it's already starting to dry. So I'm just gonna start sanding and another thing that I love about these sanding pads is the back side of them are sponge so sandpaper is hard like paper paper um, this sponge allows you to like really curve it to your hands and um, it's just more comfortable it doesn't slip out of your hand like sandpaper seems to do and sometimes when you sand on sandpaper and you keep going like this, you'll have finger marks to where you've pressed down with your fingers and it will look less 
less natural, I should say. Okay, so I have that, and you can see some of the paint come off, come off of it. And I just go over this way. You do have to be careful. If you, if I had just painted this um, and let it dry, I wouldn't be sanding as rough as what I am. I'd be really light-handed, um, like I said, because it was fresh, fresh, freshly painted. But I can be a little bit more rough with it, and I kind of want a heavier distress. But you can really sand it down and not realize you're, you've really got it sanded down. So I'm just going to show you guys this little bit. And I have a little sponge. You can use like a wet paper towel if you want. You just have to be careful. Some wet paper towels will leave like little balls of lint on them. So you can use a lint free too, but I'm just using a Scotch sponge and wiping off um, that excess paint that's still sitting on it. And you can see how that really showed um, the bones, let's see, of the distressing. So it really made it come through. All right. And I'm gonna bring the camera down so you can kind of see right here a little bit better what I'm doing, a little bit more detailed. All right, don't mind my workshop area, but you guys can kind of see. And the shadowing and lighting is not good. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna just take this sanding pad again kind of wiping off that paint that's on it and this I kind of like distressed it just a tad to see what I wanted but I really like like this a lot better so I'm just gonna go in and if it shakes I'm sorry the water and you can really see oh yes so this is a heavier distress to me That's distressed and then this is not so you can kind of just see how it gives it a little bit more character especially a piece that is flatter okay so I get asked a lot do I need a distress do I have to um, do I distress right after I paint can I wait a few days um, and how do I distress all of those are great questions. You, one, do not have to distress. It's personal preference. Um, I typically distress over pieces that are flatter boned. Um, they need that character um, to really liven up the piece. Or if I have something that is really ornate um, and I want those ornate details to really pop, um, then I will certainly distress. Um, you can also use clear or, uh, or not clear, sorry, uh, dark wax white wax or black wax um, to make those ornate pieces pop also if you don't like that um, distress look. So there's all different kinds of distressing. There's really, really heavy distressing to where like you barely have any paint on it. Um, there's a little bit of heavier to medium, which is what I just did. Um, and then there's a finer distress to where it's more natural. Um, and it's more like if you buy an authentic piece that has been painted back in the day, um, 
and it's been worn and torn, uh, that may have a few chips here and there. So that's more natural to me. Um, and it's light distressing is what I call it. So that, how, where you distress, it's personal preference again. Um, so where you distress at, I always distress where pieces are raised, where it's naturally going to be, um, say around drawer pulls, it's gonna be pulled, touched by fingers, knocked edges um, of your piece uh, around the feet, of course, when it gets moved, kicked by on a table or something of the sort. So where it's naturally gonna be worn at, um, where people are naturally gonna put their hands and chip and rough up the piece. So that's typically where I do my distressing. So you can get a little bit carried away, especially if you have a flat piece like this. Um, and I call them cheetah spots. <laughs> So you can um, imagine a, and you've probably seen them before, a uh, oh, chest of drawers, and it's just one flat drawer. And instead of just distressing around the edges, like I would naturally, how it would naturally distress and maybe around the knob if it has one or the pull, you kind of have patches here and here and here and here and here. So to me, that's like, forced distressing. It's personal preference. I just don't recommend that. Sometimes it'll make the piece look, um, take away the character of the piece of furniture too. So um, it, it honestly just depends on the bones of the furniture that you have, your personal preference, and um, what it looks like after you paint it, if you need that extra touch to it. So that's why I would distress. Um, I hope that helps answer some questions. It's really simple, uh, easy to do. So thank you guys for watching.